Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2021 comedy sequel, Coming to America, or Coming to America 2. The film is directed by Craig Brewer and it stars, of course, Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, uh, Sherry Headley, Kiki Lane, James Earl Jones, Morgan Freeman, Wesley Snipes and Jermaine Fowler. Now, this is the direct sequel to the 80s comedy classic, uh, the Eddie Murphy 80s comedy classic, and it's a film that many of us, I think it's fair to say, have been quite anticipating. Now, this time round, uh, Eddie Murphy has been um, in Zamunda with his wife, Lisa, for 30 years. Um, his father is very, very close to death, and he learns on his father's deathbed, basically, that he has an illegitimate son in America basically back in Queens and they explain that away in fairly comedic fashion so it does kind of make sense I suppose um, and he decides to go to America to find his long lost son because he needs a male heir because the local general is threatening him uh, trying to force him um, into a marriage with his one of his three daughters if you like um, and he doesn't really want to do any of that so he goes to America to find his illegitimate son uh, Leslie Jones is his mother who he had a one night stand with brings him back to Zamunda and trains him to be the prince um, and quite similar shenanigans take place to the first film right what are my thoughts on coming to America right um I'm a little bit mixed my thoughts and feelings on this film I'll be honest here um I think it's fair to say I don't think you could have expected much more here from a sequel to a, such a classic comedy film it retreads much of the old ground um in so many ways you see the same characters, you know, the guys in the barber shop um, who haven't aged a day in 30 years, <laughs> still doing the same things. You've still got, you know, McDowell's joke going on. you still got um, a lot of the same characters in it from the first one, same actors, all this kind of stuff. But if you like Jermaine, uh, is it Jermaine Jones? Uh, Jermaine Fowler, sorry who plays his son is is essentially Eddie Murphy in the first film he's living out Eddie Murphy's story in the first film uh, you know potentially getting put into an arranged marriage uh, but he wants to marry someone who he loves meet someone that he thinks he could be in love with etc etc and it all plays out very much by the same blueprint of the first film and that is the biggest weakness here it doesn't take enough risks this film I don't think with the story or the narrative um, and it, it's it's almost a carbon copy of the first film in many many ways. It, they've just kind of flipped it a little bit. You know what I mean? Most of the uh, story takes place in Zamunda this time, whereas last time it was in America. Um, so they've just kind of flipped it in that sense. But it is essentially the same movie, but with like I say, Jermaine Fowler playing the Eddie Murphy character in this this time round. I don't think Eddie Murphy's in this enough and what you do see of him I suppose it's fair to say he's still playing the same character that he was in the first film he didn't really get all the laughs in the first film it was those around him and these crazy characters that he created you know um, and Arsenio Hall and stuff they all got the laughs and he was the straight guy really if in, in the first coming to America film so he doesn't really deviate much away from that here which is a bit of a shame, you know what I mean? I would have liked to have seen a little bit more from Eddie Murphy in this film. Um, but I think there are things that will frustrate and annoy in this film. I've got to be honest, I thought Leslie Jones um, was so annoying. I mean, so annoying. Um, she was annoying in Ghostbusters. I mean, I'm, I'll be honest, I've not seen a lot of stuff about she, but everything I've seen that she's been in... I just find her annoying. It's just loud, big, loud, shouty comedy, over-the-top, look-at-me type comedy, and it really bothers me. I don't, I don't 
like that style of comedy and she's really grating in this film um, Tracy Morgan I believe is in this film as well he's okay but again I think they've almost tried to chuck everything at this film some of it sticks a lot of it doesn't some of the gags will make you chuckle there are some fun gags in regards to male circumcision and he's got to go through these princely trials and he's got to get these whiskers from a line some of that's tied kind of funny you know he discovers you know the royal bathing and all this kind of stuff for the first time but it's nothing most of it isn't anything we haven't already seen before um, they even make a comment at one point in this film about sequels you know uh, trying to live up to the originals when they talk about American films and it, it you know they try and be clever and meta and it, it you know it again it, it just feels a bit cringy didn't really need to do that there's some pretty poor CGI with one of the lions I felt as well um, and it almost feels like the fizz and that pop you got from the first one it's it's the same drink but without the fizz if that kind of makes sense to you however I, I feel like I'm being a bit harsh on the film because I'm, I'm not gonna lie there's there are some fun moments in the film there are some feel-good moments in the film it does carry a couple of messages as well but it doesn't cram them down your throat like many of the films these days you know they they, they, they try and force feed you these messages you know about um, politics or race or um, uh, gender or you know feminism you know there, there are there are there are subtle messages here about some of those subject matters but it doesn't force feed you and it feels comfortable in the film and you kind of agree with them um, so you do get a feel-good factor to the film um, there are some chuckle moments here there are some fairly funny moments here but for me it was too similar to the first one it didn't take enough risks and I'm sorry, but Jermaine Fowler, as much as he tries, is no Eddie Murphy. So, yeah, I, I'm, I think it's going to be a little bit lukewarm to many who've been looking forward to this film. I think I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. I think I'm being maybe a tad generous there. But I didn't dislike the film. I just thought it was too much um, of a carbon copy of the first one. So that is my review for Coming to America. I hope you liked it. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching. Of course I will be back with more content and reviews on the channel very very soon.